Spark, Pixel Mato Pro VLC Player, Honey, Final Cut Pro, Grammarly for Safari, Capture 122, Pages, Story Bother, and uTorrent Web. These are 10 of some of the most useful Mac apps in 2022, and most of them are free. I'll start with the first, Spark. I find this one to be the most practical and utilitarian because it's a very good alternative for inbox by Gmail, which is like the gold standard. You can set up a smart inbox with smart notifications. You can use it to work with groups and teams of people, which is great if you have to shuffle a lot of emails. You can also use Gmail features with a non-Gmail account like Yahoo, Outlook, iCloud, and more. Now, I'm not sure if they're the only ones doing this, but I think it's great. The app is also available for free on iPhone, iPad, and Mac devices. They're currently working on an Android version, so you can have that integration across all platforms. But the best part of this app is I can have multiple inboxes running at the same time, and I don't have to go to different websites for that. Number two is Pixelmator Pro. This app can easily be a replacement for Photoshop. I'm serious. It offers features that makes it useful for anyone who works with images, whether you're a graphic designer, a photographer, a developer, a YouTuber, or you just design documents. I'm about to probably lose some light, but it don't matter. Just in case we lose some light, we, we, we gonna still make it work, people. We gonna make it work. One cool thing about this software is its use of machine learning to identify subjects and different elements within your picture. I really like it because it's a balance of something powerful, yet very easy to use compared to other options out there. The desktop version of Piximator is only available for the Mac, and it has been developed to take full advantage of the power of the M1 chip, so you don't have to worry about optimization issues. Now, this app isn't free. It costs $59.99, but it's worth it, and you can download the free trial to check it out. There's also a version of this app that runs on the iPhone and iPad. Next is VLC Player. I've known this software now for a number of years, and for something that's free, it just keeps getting better. I like how much you can increase the volume on this app. Compared to the native Apple QuickTime Player, you get almost five to six decibels higher, and that is because it optimizes video and audio playback for your chosen device. I also find that there is a difference in color rendition between QuickTime and the VLC player. But I prefer how the VLC seems to have more saturation. It looks more filmic than the Apple QuickTime player. The biggest reason I use VLC player though is that it's a universal media player that supports almost all file formats, streaming, everything. Did I already mention that it's free? Number four is Honey. This isn't really a Mac app. It's more of an extension, but a really good one if you're looking to save money. It's a browser extension that automatically searches for coupons on most of your favorite shopping websites. As soon as you log on the website, it's just a lot easier than having to really go through coupon sites, especially in this day and age where we buy everything online. It's free as well. Next is Final Cut Pro. I think everybody already knows what Final Cut Pro can do at this point, especially for people who make videos. Even though it's not the most comprehensive in terms of coloring options like DaVinci, I still believe that it is probably the most efficient software for quick turnaround projects. It is reliable, it doesn't crash as often as Premiere, the magnetic timeline is just really easy to work with, and I believe it is probably the one with the least learning curve. It's really easy for you to pick up, especially with so much tutorials about it online. Check YouTube. Although it's not free, it comes with a one-time fee, which is also not really budget-friendly, if I'm to be honest, but it's worth it for the lifetime updates. I should also mention that most of these apps are not genre-specific, which means that you can use them across any industry that you're working in, whether it's creative, finance, engineering, IT, whatever the point, it is to help you maximize your efficiency for productivity, save time, and probably some money while you enjoy using your computer. 
The next on the list is Grammarly for Safari. This is another browser extension that looks for spelling and grammar issues in your text and documents. And I find that it just gives that extra layer of quality assurance to my emails and tweets. I just thought it was worth mentioning. There's a free version you can install and it does a great job. Number seven is Capture One. And I think I probably arrived on this app much later than I would have really wanted to. The first reason I switched to Capture One was because I needed live tethering. I was going to work on a commercial project for a client and they needed to see what we were filming or taking photos of in real time. Making that happen in Lightroom <laughs> wasn't as straightforward as I'd want it to be. Plus, there was a lot of lag in the Lightroom feed. So I asked around and Capture One came up. I started digging into the software and I was so impressed by how well it worked. It's not free, so I ended up just buying it, but by far a more superior software than Lightroom in my opinion. Next is the Story Bother app. If you make videos, you probably plan out your shots and ideas. Well, this is exactly what this app is for. It gives you a chance to be an artist even if you cannot draw. It also has dummy models that you can work with. For people who are not video editors, you can use this software as a whiteboard to scribble, write, create a comic, or do anything you want. I think it's a great tool and it's free. Number nine is uTorrent Web. If you ever download Torrent and you're looking for the best Mac Torrent downloader, I think this is the best option out there. Because of how well it works, you don't necessarily download a software to your device. It works directly with your browser like an extension. As soon as you click on the Torrent, it automatically just syncs with your browser and downloads the file to your laptop. So it really just takes away one more process in the torrent chain which works for me and it's free as well pages this is kind of like apple's own version of microsoft word i think a lot of people don't really use it because they've used microsoft word for so long and it's not the standard or because they just don't know about this app i started using pages earlier this year and i find that i like the designs better especially the built-in 2D and 3D graphics, charts, and things like that. And the alignment tool in pages for pictures just feels better to me. You can export your page document as a Microsoft Word file if you need to share it with Word users or as a PDF document. That's gonna wrap up my recommendations for apps that you should have on your MacBook Pro. Let me know some of the apps that I should probably talk about or that I missed out in the comment section. Take care and everything will be perfectly balanced. Do you like my arrow? Do you like my arrow frame? Do you like my arrow frame? Boom!